Zyzel. In this USG how-to video, we'll discuss implementing user-based PSK on dynamic IPsec VPN tunnel policies to provide unique pre-shared keys for every dynamic VPN client. The USG supports IPsec VPN, SSL VPN, and L2TP over IPsec. Although the latter two methods inherently support granular access by user, IPsec typically does not. In the past, when using the USG as a VPN gateway for multiple dynamic VPN clients, all the clients were required to use the same pre-shared key for the VPN security agreement. If, for example, one of those clients left the company or franchise that used the VPN policy, the PSK might need to be changed for the SA and all associated clients to ensure only authorized clients could access the VPN. In the latest USG appliances, we support user-based PSK for IPsec VPN. With this method, each dynamic VPN client has a unique PSK, and if one client must be removed from VPN access, it won't affect the other client's credentials for the same VPN security agreement. Before we begin, understand the setup of user-based PSK. The USG will be acting as an IPsec gateway for several clients, so the VPN connection must be initiated by the clients, not the USG. User-based PSK is only supported by IKE version 1 using aggressive negotiation mode. Also, the USG only supports the local user database for user-based PSK. This means you'll need to create a local user account directly as a USG user object for every client that needs to connect, and then put those users in a local USG group object. Let's start by configuring the IPsec rule on the USG, and then looking at what you'll need to do for the IPsec clients to make user-based PSK work. Connect to the USG's LAN port and point your web browser to its management IP address. The default IP address for the USG is 192.168.1.1. If using the default self-signed certificate on your USG, your browser may present you with a security warning, but it's perfectly okay to proceed. Default username is admin, and the default password is 1234. If you're still using the default password, you'll be prompted to change it and will have to log back in using the new password. Once you've logged in, you should see the dashboard and the menu bar on the left margin. First, go to the Configuration, Object, User Group menu and add a new user as an account for your first IPsec VPN client. The name field is mandatory and doesn't allow for the use of spaces or special characters. Keep the user type set to user, and then create a password. The description field is optional, but might help you identify the remote location or VPN client for which the account is used. Click OK to save the new user account, and then repeat these steps for any additional IPsec VPN clients you need to connect through the user-based PSK policy. Now, click on the Group tab, and add a new group. Although the name field is mandatory and doesn't allow for the use of spaces or special characters, the description field is optional but can still be used for easier reference. Select the desired user accounts for this group from the Available section, and then use the right arrow to put them in the Member section. Once all the desired user accounts have been added, click OK to save the group. Next, go to the Configuration, VPN, IPsec VPN menu, and click the VPN Gateway tab. Add a new policy or edit an existing IKE version 1 policy by double-clicking on it or by selecting it and clicking the Edit button. First, enable the policy and give it a VPN gateway name, which doesn't allow the use of spaces or special characters. Remember that the user-based PSK feature will only work on IKE version 1 selected in the IKE version section. In the gateway settings, select the My Address setting appropriate to your USG but set the peer gateway address to dynamic address. In the authentication section, select user-based PSK and select the user group you created in the previous steps. In the phase one settings near the bottom of the menu, remember to set the negotiation mode to aggressive, otherwise the user-based PSK function won't work. If you need to alter any proposal, key group, or other advanced settings, click on the show advanced settings button in the top of the pop-up menu to do so. Click OK to save your gateway policy. Finally, you'll need to create a connection policy by clicking on the VPN Connection tab and either adding or editing a connection policy. First, enable the policy and give it a connection name, which doesn't allow the use of spaces or special characters. 
In the VPN Gateway section, select Remote Access Server Role. Select the user-based PSK VPN Gateway you created in the previous step. For the local policy, select whichever address object to which you want your remote clients to connect. If you need to create a new object, you can do so by clicking on the Create New Object button at the top of the pop-up menu. If you need to alter any proposal, key group, or other advanced settings, click the Show Advanced Settings button in the top of the pop-up menu to do so. Click OK to save your connection policy. On your IPsec VPN client, we'll use another USG as an example client, although the exact settings on other IPsec VPN clients will have varying labels. Go to the Configuration, VPN, IPsec VPN menu and click on the VPN Gateway tab. Add a new rule or edit an existing IKE version 1 rule by double clicking on it or by selecting it and clicking the Edit button. First, enable the policy and give it a VPN gateway name, which doesn't allow the use of spaces or special characters. Remember that user-based PSK will only work with IKE version 1 selected in the IKE version section. In the gateway settings, select the My Address setting appropriate to your USG, but set the peer gateway address to static address and enter whatever you're using on the parent USG's VPN gateway address. Put the client's user-based PSK in the pre-shared key field Click the Show Advanced Settings button. In the Local ID Type field, select DNS and enter the user-based PSK username you programmed onto the parent USG as a user object into the Content field. Remember to set your negotiation mode to aggressive and match any network proposal, key group, or other advanced settings to what the parent USG is using. Click OK to save the gateway policy. Continuing on the example USG client, Create a connection policy by clicking on the VPN Connection tab and either adding or editing a connection policy. First, enable the policy and give it a connection name which doesn't allow the use of spaces or special characters. In the VPN Gateway section, select Remote Access Client Role. Select the VPN gateway you created in the previous step. For the local policy, select whichever address object the client needs to use for local hosts. For the remote policy, select an address object that matches whatever the parent USG is set to use on its local policy. If you need to create a new object, you can do so by clicking on the Create New Object button at the top of the pop-up menu. Remember to avoid overlapping subnets between the local and remote policies, as this will cause VPN routing errors. If you need to alter any proposal, key group, or other advanced settings, click on the Show Advanced Settings button in the top of the pop-up menu to do so. Click OK to save your connection policy. Once you create your VPN policies on your parent USG and dynamic IPsec clients, you should now be able to have all your dynamic clients be able to connect to the IPsec VPN using their own unique usernames and passwords for easier administration and better security. For more USG how-to videos, see our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Zizel USA.